communication is a key factor when it comes to species like wolves that live together in social or family groups and rely on things like cooperation, coordination and reinforcements of bonds between the pack members. Within a wolf pack, communication helps to convey and learn specific information, to express emotions, feelings and intentions among each other and to maintain the social structure and stability. And to do all that, just like any other highly social animal, the wolf developed a complex way of communicating that includes three different main forms of communication. Vocalization, body language and sense and smells. If you have seen my other language of animal videos, you will find similarities in the communication between the different social animals. If you haven't seen them, feel free to check them out after this video. Links will be in the description or you can easily find them on my channel. But let's get back to the wolves and start with the first form of communication. A common disbelief is that wolves howl at night at the moon, which is actually not true. They simply are communicating with each other and since they are most active in the evening when everything goes quiet and the wind dies down, they can be most often heard at that time. But there's way more than just a howl. The acoustic communication is very important in wolf packs and accompanies much of a wolf's social behaviors, playing a role not only in friendly greetings and interactions, but also in hunting, defending the territory and attacking. Wolves are able to produce a variety of vocalizations with different meanings including, but not limited to, barking, whimpering and growling. There is also a chance that they will make a combination of sounds such as a growl bark. Let's listen to each of those and find out what they mean. A wolf howl is loud and can be heard in great distances. It seems to be all about the pack and the bond within the pack. It is often used to indicate things that are concerning the whole pack such as gathering for a hunt, mourning the death of a family member or announcing territorial and mating intentions. But howls are also used to show solidarity with each other and to strengthen their ties. Growls and snarls are mainly used as a threat or a warning, for example to an intruding wolf or predator that came into the territory. Growls are also used to indicate or signify dominance over others. Barking in wolves is a mostly rare occasion and is mainly used as an alarm or warning sign when the wolf senses any kind of danger. It is often a sign of aggression and can be used in combination with the growl as a growl bark. Whines and whimpers are often a sign of friendly interaction, such as a mother indicating to her pups that she is ready to nurse them. But it can also be a sign of frustration, anxiety or submissive behavior when a wolf indicates to give up to a dominant wolf. The mentioned vocalizations were the most common or the most important ones, but a wolf can even produce more sounds such as yelps, woofs, moans and yawns. Pups are also able to squeak, squeal or even scream. Next to vocalizations, the physical communication or body language is probably equally important within a wolf pack. It is often used to show either signs of dominance or submissive behavior, where the submissive behavior can further be divided into active and passive submission. I feel like at this point I have to mention that wolf packs are not structured like a lot of people still believe. A pack of wolves in the wild is generally not a group of random wolves that came together in a pack, where the strongest one is the alpha who took the crown in a number of dominant fights and the weakest one is the omega wolf who gets beaten up all the time. That might be true for zoos and animal parks, but not in the wild. In the wild a pack of wolves mainly consists of the breeding pair, the parents, who lead the pack and teach or discipline their offspring, often with dominant behavior but with no actual dominance fights. A wolf's body language repertoire includes, but is not limited to, posture, crouching, tail positioning and facial expressions. 
dominant wolves, most often being the parents, carry themselves with an erect and confident body posture, sometimes even placing the heads on top of other heads or necks. A common submissive posture is rolling over, revealing the belly and throat, the most vulnerable parts of their body, to the dominant counterpart. Another submissive gesture is the crouching position or the crouching approach by keeping the head and body low while approaching others. Just like with our domesticated dog, the tail positioning in a wolf shows clear signs. A high carry tail shows confidence, contentness and maybe even kind of authority, whereas a tucked in tail is a sign of non-aggression, discontent, stress and anxiety or submissive behavior. Wolves can convey much with their face and have a dynamic display of visual cues. Just like humans, wolves use facial expressions in many different situations, including play and social interactions, disciplining, defending territory or hunting. Especially important are the positioning of the ears, the movement with the mouth and lips and also the look they will give. The facial expressions are often accompanied by vocalizations. If a wolf is angry, aggressive or defensive over something, it may growl, curl the lip, bare the teeth, stick their ears up and give an intense stare. Whimpering, squinted eyes and tucked back ears are a sign of submission or insecurity. Probably to no one's surprise, wolves have a great sense of smell that is about a hundred times higher than the human sense of smell. And of course, they are very capable of smelling when potential prey or enemies are near. But that is not the only way they will use their great sense of smell. A very common way of communicating through smell is the so-called scent marking, which a lot of animals will do. Just like your dog, wolves mark their territory by urinating or dropping feces as a sign for intruding wolves or predators that the territory is already occupied. It is highly likely that pack members can identify and recognize specific other pack members by smell, which becomes useful when they are separated or enter a new territory. Next to scent marking the territory, they will also use urine to mark empty and exhausted food caches in order to not waste time the next time they come around. Next to scent marking, scent following and also the rolling in different scents to coat their fur with the desired odor, wolves use a chemical communication in the form of pheromones. Wolves have a number of glands all over their body that produce pheromones that are then used as chemical messages. The glands are on the bottom of their feet between the toes and also on the tail, the eyes, genitalia and the skin. An example for pheromone communication is that a male wolf is able to identify a female in estrus by those pheromones so that he knows when his partner is ready to mate. Now at the end here I hope you got a general sense and understanding of a wolf's communication which goes way further than just howling or growling. Like I mentioned in the beginning, if you are interested in the communication of other social animals, feel free to check out my other language of animals videos. Also if you want to learn more about wolves and their life in the wild, check out the book The Wisdom of Wolves by Ellie H. Radinger. It shows great detail to the fascinating and intricate life of wolf packs in a very pleasant and approachable way. Anyways, I really hope you liked the video. If you did, please click on the like button. Also feel free to subscribe to my channel so you won't miss any new videos. It is free and only takes one second to do. But most importantly, take care of yourselves and have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day.